Yo, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of the Savage the Podcast, man. We got another dope episode for y'all tonight. I ain't even gonna introduce these guys, man. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, man. Go ahead with it, player. Hey, what's up? They call me Tatum Up, aka Gutter Gutter, aka One's Up. You got a shooter right here. His manager, straight out the Gutter Records. Okay. So you guys got a, you guys got a pretty dynamic, um, you know, partnership going, man. How did how that come about? How'd you guys first link up? Well, pretty much, uh, the homies always been into like um, managing me and shit. You know, always put it in my ear about management. And, um, you know, that's what I needed because I tattoo and shit. So I haven't really had time to really get into the scene or network. Right. So that's where he came into play. You know, he'd be like out there uh, promoting me, hooking up with promoters and, and whatnot. Right. Well, especially with a busy schedule, it's got to be, you know, pretty difficult to like time manage and everything. Yeah. But we so, go way back. Though. Yeah. So you guys got a long history. So it's like, you know, to, yeah, yeah. to, to go into partnership yeah, and business yeah, together yeah, was yeah. Like, like second nature, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. How do, how, do you, how do you like being a manager? Uh, you know, it's just, it's going with the flow with yeah. you, you know what I mean? The opportunity's there. Right. But it's just, you know, we're homies first. Right. So, so that trust know, factor's right, there. You know, and then that's what it's all about, putting our hood out there, you know, the city. Definitely. And this was putting it on, you know, so right. it's just easy, easy from there. Yeah. You know I mean? And speaking of that, man, Tat, you, you've been you've been definitely putting your work in, bro, and making a name for your for your city and for the IE and all that, too, man. How did how did you even get into the music, man? Because I know you're an avid tattoo artist, I want to touch yeah, on that, too, but yeah. how, how did you step into the music? Well, I, I would write. Well, I was busted for, like, seven years, so, like, it was like an outlet. You know, I'd write poems. I started off just, like, writing poems and shit, and then I just started, like, transitioning my poems into raps, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was a porter right there, so, like... I'd always bullshit with the homies. I was a porter, you know, too. Homie, yeah. Shout out to the porter jobs out yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> the homies be right there drinking and shit, and they'd be like, bust the flow. So I'd just bust some shit, you know, freestyle some shit, right. whatever. And then uh, from there, I just, uh, I had a book. I had a book of rhymes I, when I got out and shit. And I uh, probably like early 2017, I did like a little freestyle on uh, on Instagram, and I I posted like, hey, I'm going to start taking this shit serious. I'm going to start rapping this year. Mm -hmm. One of my older homies tapped in. Uh, Rudy, shout out to homie Rudy. He's like, hey, I'll pay for the studio time. I know a spot. Let's roll, you know? Right. And he took me right there uh, to Riverside uh, to Joe at Little Green Studio. Shout out shout to the Riv. Yeah, shout, out to, shout out to Joe at Little Green Studio. Uh, then from there, I just started going. I started going, <clears throat> like, trying to go every other week and just lay some shit down. Right. You know? So I got a couple projects out, but I wasn't really serious about it because I didn't know the ins and outs, you know, of uh, distribution and all that shit. Right. And once I started picking up game on everything. Well, and marketing and just how to mm -hmm. how to get yourself out there and all yeah, that. Yeah, so now once I started getting it going and seeing a little revenue coming in, I was like, man, it pushed me to, you know, do it more. Right. And shit. I think that would motivate anybody. Once you mm -hmm. see, like, you know what I'm saying, the fruits of your labor starting to come to life and fruition, it's like, okay, maybe I do got something here. What was that turning point for you when you realized, damn, I'm really onto something, like, I need to keep doing this? Probably, like, probably like mid-2018. You know, I started getting a little bigger checks from Empire, and I was just like, "Oh, shout out to Empire!" Man. I was like, "I gotta get, I gotta just keep pushing." You know, the right. more the more I have out, the, the the bigger my checks are gonna be every month. So, right. from 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 that point on, I was just I was just try to I try to at least shoot a video a month, every other month, drop a video. You know, right. I want to get to the point before I drop this next project where I have like two videos a month dropping. Mm -hmm. You know, type right. shit. Well, you've been pretty consistent over the years too. You know what I'm saying? And even just the the time that we worked together, we worked on a lot of shit together too. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I've noticed that about you, man. You always keep your feet on the ground, man. Between tattooing, you know what I'm saying, handling your other business, and and then doing music. But let's mm -hmm. talk about first or nothing, man. The new project. Well, first or nothing, you know, I pretty much I pretty much put that together. I found an old picture. I found an old picture at my mom's with me and my. Me and my brother and my sister and shit were up in my dad's garage, like all you know, banged out with the cover art was hard. I ain't yeah, go front with the first in the background was my dad's. My dad had the garage all hooked up, so I was like, man, I gotta fucking drop a little EP with this as the cover. You know, I designed that cover myself and shit. That's and right. Fucking threw a little. I had I have a gang of unreleased shit, so I was like, I'm gonna throw a little eight tracks on there, little eight bangers, and uh, save the rest of the shit I got for when I drop this uh, next project. I want to work <clears> on a couple more songs before <throat> I do that, though. Right. I have some more deeper songs, deeper meaning songs in it. Yeah, for sure. So you're pretty much just using this as like a stepping stone to get some content out before you drop the big shit this summer? Yep. yep. Well, I was fucking with Slangin' and Bangin' on their ass. Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. me how those records came about, man. Those were, those were some of my favorites on there. The, the, those songs right yeah. there? Uh, on the ass? How did On the ass come out? Oh, on the ass came about, I think I was just feeling myself that day, and I was like, man, I've been on the ass, you know? Right. And uh, I just, uh, the homie, same same homie, I got that beat from the homie Anthony and... Uh, I was just like, man, I felt that hook, and I was just like, Phew. I've been fucking with the homie uh, Mixed by Sinatra, and he makes my shit sound like quality, quality, right. so I was just like, I'm going to fucking record this one, and then uh, 
I found a good video guy out there in fucking uh, Vegas, uh, shot by PD, shout out shot by PD, uh, and he fucking shot that shit quick, fucking edited in like two days, and I was like, oh. I'm gonna See, that's a quick turnaround there. right there. And I didn't have nobody out there really <clears throat> in Vegas because I'm kind of new out there, so right. once I got him, I'm like, man, I'm going to stay dropping videos out there, dropping videos out here, you know? Right. So as far as like like your whole your whole concept for like uh, establishing a project, like do you just start with the beats? What's your creative process? Um, pretty much, I just drop, I just... I just drop song. I just record and record and record, and then I have a bu- I have a bunch of unreleased shit, and I'm just like, okay, this these will sound good together. I'm gonna throw all these on one project, you know? Right. But uh, this next project, I really want to take my time and do like skits, and you know, because it's gonna be called uh, From the Gutter I Rise. So I want to have like not just like some banged out shit like my regular shit. Have like some storytelling shit. It's more like, like sentimental type sentimental, records and shit. Like a song for my daughter, a song for. Uh, for my moms, you know, like more uh, family type deal, you know, maybe like a summer banger, like a summertime kicking it type. Right, banger. right. Do you feel like you feel like nowadays a lot of artists are lacking those sentimental records, like as far as like being a little more open, like with their personal life or family and I, shit like that. I feel I feel like yeah, but I feel like in a way to even do that, you'd have to have some type of like buzz because. Most people don't give those songs that that hear, you know. Everybody wants to hear just that head knocking banger shit. Right. They just repetitive hook that they could just vibe to, you know. Right. So I I wouldn't say they're lacking. I just feel like most of the artists you see do that are bigger artists that are already like have a big fan base to right. where they can, you know, people are gonna give because people are already kind of like tapped in and tuned in and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that makes sense. Well, um, as far as like the new project, where like like how many how many tracks are you planning on doing on that? I was trying to push at least seventeen to eight, seventeen to twenty songs. Oh, so you want to do like a full on, yeah, full on project? Oh yeah, yeah. I want this to be like my main shit, like my hardest album so far, and uh, you know, because twenty twenty two is my year and shit. Yeah. I want to make it popping. Well, you went big. You went big in twenty twenty one, man. Tell us from the gutter, man. Yeah, 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 you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I had some, I had some, uh, some, some hands in on that shit yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, we did yeah, War Cry. Back, we did uh, Back to the House on First. Yeah, Back to the House on First. Yeah. The one with Baldacci mm-hmm. and Vicky. Yeah. Shout out to Homegirl Vicky. Shout out to Baldacci. Yeah, yeah. How did that? How did that record come about, man? Baldacci's a he's a real cool dude, man. Well, that one, uh, the Homegirl Vicky actually, she ended up, uh, you know, cause she been she been doing her shit too, and she was like, hey, fucking, uh, you know, I'm gonna get a feature from this fool. Let's do it. So I was like, all right, hell yeah, let's get it cracking. Right, we did that one's a little more like a uh, different type of vibe song too, you know. Right, and I feel like it didn't get as much exposure as, as I, I thought it should. But like like I said, I feel like I need to get a little more buzz, a little bigger fan base right. to really get people to hear me out on shit like that. Right. Well, a lot of people have told me too, man. There's this theory called the the trickle effect, mm-hmm. and basically meaning like you could put out records like from years ago or whatever, right? But all it takes is that one record for to yeah, pop, and then it. everybody's gonna go back and flood all that old shit. Mm-hmm. So the records you'd be like, damn, man, that's nobody, how, that, everybody yeah, slept on that one yeah, to go that, back and you know. That's, hear how, it. that's how I was doing with Rambo. You know, I fuck with Rambo. Uh, right. I fuck with Rambo <clears> hard, and then when I heard that one with him and Draco, then mm-hmm. I started bumping his old shit, and I was like, that's full bit handsome hard ass. Shit. Right. But you're sleeping until the shit starts cracking like that. Mm-hmm. So let's let's uh, let's revert back a little bit, man. Um, the tattooing, bro, you be killing it, man, on that shit. So how how do you first of all how did you get started in tattooing, and and did it come before music? Did music come after that? How'd that go? Yeah, tattooing's always been my well. I always drew. I drew religiously every day when I was busted, like four or five hours a day. I would just sit there and draw as my pastime because it was kind of like therapeutic for me, you know, get right. my mind out of everything. So. Uh, I was slammed down for like two years, so I didn't really have access to a tattoo machine. So once I hit the hit the main line, then I was like, man, I got my hands on a tattoo machine and started going all off on my leg. Right. Did a, like my whole leg. You started on yourself first? Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. Did like my whole right leg. And then once I did like a female's realistic face on my thigh, then started showing all the homies and then everybody wanted me to tat them up. So right. From there, I just started tatting in there and fucking I had a phone and shit. So I just like kept pictures of everything I had. And then uh, when I got out, fucking, I, I I tapped in with Hidden Tattoo. Shout out to Hidden Tattoo. Shout that's, out to Hidden Tattoo. That's the tattoo family right there. They, you know, they gave me opportunity to work there. And uh, I've been working there since. I still go, you know, I'm, st- I'm in Vegas, but every time I come back, I still go right there and shit. Mm-hmm. Tattoo right there. It's always good vibes. I learned a lot right there right. and shit. I think everybody's got to go through those learning phases, too. I know I, I had to go through that shit, too, man. Just like, you know, you, you got to really hone in on your craft, man. You ever heard mm-hmm. of the 10,000 hour theory? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to put you on game. So they have this thing. It's called the 10,000 hour theory. They say that anything you do for 10,000 hours, not like back to back. There's no way you could do it consistently. But like over your life or over several years, yeah. if you've done it for 10,000 hours, you officially become a master of your craft. So if you've done karate for 10,000 hours, you're officially a karate master. You know what I'm saying? Tattooing. Fucking music, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's just that. I that. wonder if I passed that, because I, I, 
Shit, I, I would say like probably like at least five days out of the week, I tattoo at least like eight to 10 hours a day. And this has been since 2017. So, I mean, you got to, you know, even if you did the math, you probably have surpassed it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's just that it's that consistency and that dedication, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? To, mm -hmm. to a craft or anything yeah. that you're really so passionate about. Mind, mind facts, facts, yeah. facts. So, yeah. um, so that's obviously how you got the name Tat Em Up, right? Mm -hmm. So you started tatting before the music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my, my, my rap name, I honestly, I just made an IG. My IG before was Sky Uno One, you know, for the hood and shit. That's right. And I lost access to that IG I had in prison. I couldn't remember the password when I got out and shit. So fucking, I just made an Instagram and I just put tat him up. And then I was like, man, fuck it. I just put that as my rap name and then that shit. Just it just kind of stuck, huh? Yeah, nobody really knows me by that. So like, when I meet people, like, tat him up, tat him up. I'm like, oh shit, like, that's my rap name now. You right. know, it's like my name now. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, do you think your music uh, outshines? Your tattoo work, or is, are they kind of neck and neck, or what, how do you feel about that? I feel like my tattoo work does I, well because that's my my real passion is tattooing. You know, right? Okay. I love I love music too. I want to be on it eventually where I could just uh, you know tat what I want to tattoo. Mm -hmm. You know, once I reach that level, because uh, I love tattooing regardless. Right. Even if I wasn't getting paid, I love you know I just love it. It's what you're like, passionate about, for real. It's what I'm passionate about. But yeah, I, I feel like my tattoo work is you know where right. where my heart's at, but. You know, I love doing music. I just like give, seeing the seeing the fucking uh, how would you say like uh, people's reaction? Yeah, the reaction. Drop and you know, like people showing love, like people really fuck with what, right. what I put out. And I love music too, so I'm like and genuinely fuck with it too, because mm -hmm. you do got a pretty cool fan base, man. Mm -hmm. And I and I think one thing I got to tip my hat to you, um, if nobody has yet, man, is the fact that you're able to balance two strong professions mm -hmm. and be good at both of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got to credit myself too, because like I do beats, I do this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I'm multifaceted, yeah. so I always tip my hat to people who are able to do that, because mm -hmm. you know some people, some people are always just like one dimensional. And then yeah. they, there's that old saying, the jack of all trades, masters none. You know that one motherfucker who can do every goddamn thing, but he's not good at any of them. Well, he's yeah, not great yeah, at any of them, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. you know, good and great are two different mm -hmm. things. But to be, you know, what I'm saying, a, a you know, a known and respectable, um, you know, artist and respected tattoo artist, and be able to, you know, combine both of those worlds. Do you feel like like tattooing and music go hand in hand? Yeah, actually, I do. They're both art, you know. Right. I just love art in general. Eventually, I want to start doing this sculpting, like getting into sculpting shit, right. and shit like that. You know, I paint here and there. I want to get more into painting too, because right. like. All that shit I love, you know, I like just love just seeing, artistic expression, yeah, period. Seeing people like reaction to what you do, like damn, that nigga really did that, you know. Right. What about uh, uh what's your what's your take on and, and I want your opinion too, the take on like the metaverse and the the NFTs and the whole the whole like digital verse that's going on right now? I don't honestly, bro, I don't really understand it. From what I heard, it's like it's more of a like uh uh like a how would you say like Money, a way to fucking pretty much put your money into something and double it or something, but I don't understand. Yeah, it. so I'm gonna keep it a buck. So the reason I keep bringing this topic up is because I'm slowly trying to learn about it too. Just like you, my schedule's busy as fuck. So you know, huh? Yeah, well, just the metaverse NFTs. I mean, I'm learning. You know what I'm saying? I'm into stocks and crypto and trading and shit like that. But, but like for me, my only downtime to really learn something is before I go to bed because that's the only time I have, I have like peace and quiet to learn something. Other than that, I'm fucking moving. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, busy and shit. That's when you're best receptive, on right? Or on the shitter and the you know shower. You know. It's usually you wanted to sleep shower or shit or you know what I'm saying but um shots fired. but uh you know for me you know what I'm saying I'm still trying to learn the process of it too but from from what I've noticed like with a lot of people it just seems like it's almost like um it's like equity so you know like but you being an artist and someone who can already you know what I'm saying create and draw and things like that that might be something to look into see me I can't even fucking operate photoshop yeah, yeah so I would have to hire somebody you know what I'm saying to create an nft well, and go from that team, process that's what we're learning so now. so so but that's the thing with the nft so if I drew if I did like a, a digital art on my on my ipad or whatever I could turn that into to an NFT. NFT. So there's a site I believe called OpenSea. So that's where you can, I guess, you can upload your NFTs and all that. I also heard this too, um, and don't quote me on this, motherfuckers. But I heard that you can even take, uh, you can take like, like um, single art, cover art, album covers, and things of that nature, logos, and that can be used as NFTs as well. Oh, okay. So. And then people buy it or they invest into well, it. Well, I think they buy into it, mm -hmm. and then it's supposed to be some some sort of equity, you know, with them. So, like, you know, what I mean, they have an ownership in it, and the more people that buy into it, you know, what I'm saying, it raises the price. It's just like anything else. Oh, okay. it's only worth what people are willing to pay. You know, what I'm saying. Oh, okay. But you know, I think it's something we should all look into because I keep hearing a lot of motherfuckers coming up on that. I'm yeah, all about yeah, trying yeah. to get it back. I, yeah, I had a homie. He said he bought one for four hundred, and then turned around like two weeks later, sold it for six bands. Shh. I'm like, what? Shots fired. Shit, we need to get on that, though. Anything oh, yeah. that's legal to flip, you know, right. flip and flip and flip would, right. would, 
we're on top of it. Right. Yeah. Well, and back to you too, Shooter. So, so being a manager and being in the managing game, what what struggles do you face or challenges? What 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 are, what are the pros and cons of being a manager? Because um, a lot of people who come on the show aren't managers; they're usually artists, talent engineers, or behind the scene people. So, I think this would be a good thing for the viewers to get an insight on too, like the perspective of a manager. Well, see, what's different for me in this situation is like this is the homie, you know, right. from childhood, you know. We've been through so much together, prison and all this stuff, you know what I mean? But, right. Um, as far as the legit managing, it makes it easy because we have that relationship. So right. it's like uh, we don't really disagree with anything and everything, we come up together and we're, we're, all, we're on top of it. Like whatever he wants, I get it out there. Right, right. right. And it's just the communication. Right. That's really what it is. Managing is that like communication and linking up with all these promoters, having mm. to make all these calls to everybody, you know, and having all these opportunities. Like, like you, give right, me right, this for sure. This is what we need, you know, exposure, right. promotion. That's where it's all at. Shows. Well, you, you guys are taking all the necessary steps to do it, too. And I mean, even just when we were talking on the phone, too, it's like, you know, the approach, everything, it's, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And that's the best way to handle yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? And obviously the dynamic you guys have, you know what I'm saying, has potential to continue to grow. But just in your experience already, like, have you had any challenges outside of the inner circle? Because, I mean, the, the greatness starts within. But yeah. it's like the, uh, the outside shit is where it can get hectic, other promoters and things like that. Have you had any, like, certain challenges, like, with promoters or anything like well, that yet? Yeah, it's like the behind-the-scenes stuff that nobody <clears throat> sees, you know, right. like that. How do we... Because we just did a show for Bravo, you know, the Bag Chaser. Right. In Santa Ana, and, like, putting all that together was... You know, it's hectic. a challenge, right. Yeah, but, no, you know, everybody just sees the finished product, but it was a, it right. was a challenge to get that done. But it right. was a big victory for us right there. That's right. So how did you guys feel about that, man? How many were in attendance for the show? Shit, that was a lot. I would say at least like two, like two three hundred people. Like that. For that's cool. Show, you know, it that's was right. Pretty good, you know. That's right. Any plans for any uh any more shows or local tours or anything this year or big tours? Yeah, we we might have one coming up. But when was it? April thirtieth. Well, the uh, Bravo Bravo's uh Bravo's uh promoter told us he'd hook us up with a slot right before Bravo in Vegas because that's where I'm at. Right, right. Either on the thirtieth or the seventh. Uh, they're yeah, they're yeah. still planning it out on the venue. Yeah, shout out, man, it's the promoter. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. How do you like it in Vegas, man? I love it out there, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, I moved out there like a little over two years ago and shit. Okay. And like the money's better, just the environment's better. You know, everybody out there is more on their money. So it's like, you know, right. it's just everybody's grinding. You right. Know, you meet people are on the same trip. Yeah. Everybody's it's funny because a lot of my people in Vegas who are from Cali, they say it's, a, it's a, I mean, there's politics anywhere you go, but they say it's a lot less political. Mm -hmm. It's just more like, you know, just do your thing, kind of, yeah, you know. Yeah. I ain't never had no one like got into it. Nobody out there. Everybody's just cool. Everybody's on their shit out there. You know, right. out here it's, you know, it's just a little different. I feel like it's just the economy, you know, the way things are out here. You right. Know, there's not that much opportunities out here, so. Well, it is pretty of, fucking slim. That's for real. A lot of motherfuckers are hungry out here. Yeah. yeah. But now yeah. it's popping, you know. You got a lot of people coming out, you know. What I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. What um, what's your guys' take just on, like, um, you know, the current state of, like, music, like, as far as, like, you know, up-and-coming artists, the sound, like, all that. Like, do you, do you feel like, do you feel like, Music is heading into a growth direction, or is it? Is it like do you feel like it's stepping backwards? I feel like it's heading into growth. Growth. When I first before when I first got out and I'd hear new shit, I'd be like, "What the fuck?" But then I'm like, billions of people love this shit, and then I give it a chance because I wouldn't really give my ear to it, and I'm right. like, "Damn, I fuck with this." Like Drake, I didn't used to fuck with Drake. Mm -hmm. I feel like Drake's one of the greats. He's you know, facts. I agree with that. He's this. hard, fucking you know, Polo G. Right. Polo G's real poetic. Like his shit reminds me like he ain't like a. His music don't like sound like Pox, but the way he raps is like right. poetic, like po like Pac, you know. Like right. I fuck with him, T Grizzly, you know. I fuck with a lot of uh, up and coming, not up and coming, but established. Yeah, just established artists for sure. Artists, you know? Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like because uh, you know a lot of people? For me, it's it's the complete opposite. A lot of people say, "Oh, I can't listen to nobody else. I don't listen to myself." For me, I think that's kind of contradictory because how else would you be inspired? Like mm -hmm. for me, I have to be inspired by someone. I, got, I listen mm -hmm. to my homies. I listen to people mm -hmm. I work with. I listen yeah. to myself. I listen to who's, you know, hot, who was old. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. like I feel like that. that's how I get Facts. motivation. Yeah, T. Grizzly, I, honestly, I, that first day out when I heard that shit, that's when I was like, man, I need to drop some shit. Like right. the way he raps about what he went through, his shit, you know, first day out, you know, like I was like, man, this shit pumped me up, you know, to want to do music when I heard his shit. Right. You know? That's dope. Well, what was your what was your um your early influences like? Who inspired you like early on in your in your life? Tupac, uh, a, lot of, a lot a lot a lot of Chicano rappers like fucking Cornejo, fucking um, 
Who else? Mr. Little One, SPM, fucking, I used to fuck with a lot of that heavy when yeah, I was younger, yeah. you know? Eminem, mm-hmm. fucking um, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent, The Game. I was real heavy on The Game and 50 Cent when yeah. they were coming up and shit. Yeah. Hey, that motherfucking, uh, that motherfucking documentary is such a classic to me, bro. Mm-hmm. I remember, I still to this day remember when that shit came out and I was like, damn, that motherfucker yeah. was hard. But I remember when Get Richard Die Trying came out too and how mm-hmm. that fucked up the world. Yeah. I, I used to, I used to always uh, get into it with my homie because uh, he was big 50 Cent fan and I was the game fan. Shout out to mm. homie Lil D. And he'd, always, he'd always be like, oh, even man, Jeezy, young 50's Jeezy way hard. Oh, I used to fuck with Jeezy. Jeezy was hard. Yeah. That, that Thug Motivation yeah, 101, yeah, that was my yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I used to have that. I used to have the album in jail. I used to really that shit all day, too. Yeah. Fucking, but we'd go at it. Fucking, he'd be like, the 50's better. I'd be like, the game's better. But at that time, I feel like 50 was better. Mm-hmm. But then now the game has just fucking stayed on his music shit. And I feel like, I don't know, in my eyes, the game shit goes harder. But then it could be because I'm from the West Coast, too. You know. My well, yeah, I mean, I'm always going to side with the West, too. I think, personally, just my opinion, I think 50 just made too much money, dog. Mm-hmm. You see, I can't pass judgment on me because I've never had money like that. So I can't be like, oh, well, I would have did this, I would have did that. But then again, I haven't had $100 million in my account. So I don't know what the fuck I would do at that point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's true, yeah. But, um... Yeah, I mean, just you know, a lot of lot of lot of good inspirations back then. So I noticed you mentioned Pac. Uh, you know, so in the West Coast, were you like, were you like really like into like old school G funk and shit like that too coming up? Yeah, well, for my family, yeah, I would, I would bump old, old shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of fucking like uh, Debbie Deb shit like that. Oh you yeah, know, yeah. Weekends work, all that type shit. You know, summertime shit. Bump, yeah, yeah. Higher shade of brown, all that shit. Oh yeah, facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. So back to the music too, man. So um, with this project that you're going, I know you said you know you're gonna be trying to really be like really diverse for it. You know what's your um, what's your plan as far as like you know putting it out? Are you gonna shoot a bunch of videos for it? Or are you gonna tour for I, it? What, I, what's your I, game plan? I want to do I, I want to do a tour. You know if things pan out the way it does, I've been looking at venues, talking to different uh, venue owners and shit. So if I could line shit up, I want to do like a little tour. But I really don't know nothing about it, so. Mm-hmm. That's why I have him to try to figure out how we would go about doing it, you right. know, and just do like a little tour, do a couple of shows every month right. you know, for at least like three or four months. Right. I really don't know how long tours last or whatever. Do you know anything about that? Not really. I mean, some, I know some last up to six months, you know what I'm saying? Some three months. I, th- I think it all just varies, bro. I, I was thinking like three months because I'd be busy with tats too, you know? Right. So like if I have to come drive down here, it's going to be like, bam, bam, turn around. Right, and right. I have my daughter too. So I try to spend as much time I can with my daughter on my Yeah, for off, sure. You know? For sure. Yeah, um, even with me, you know, I'm still trying to figure things out on this shit. But the great thing is, like, you know, having a team around you. We've talked about this before, mm-hmm. too. And, you know, we recently spoke on it, too. Like, like for me, man, you got to have a team, man. A machine is what runs sure. everything. There's no successful person without a strong team behind them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you don't having that dynamic, bro, is what is what you know is able to elevate anybody in that. Mm-hmm. You know, so do you guys think that, like, you know, as far as where you're, in the direction that you're headed now, that um, you can see it just continuing to grow? Like, are you getting into merch or like what, what what's your next move as far as like like any kind of um, uh, yeah, I'm content? Getting, I, I I got some new merch dropping soon. It's gonna be called Dead Faces. Okay. Yeah, so that shit, that shit, uh, I got a couple shirts, uh, I got a bundle of shirts coming in like two weeks, so I'm going to drop those and then see how those do, and then uh, I want to try to set up a website, because that shit's just too much of a headache for me to have right. to get this, get that, you know, I'd rather just uh, have them place the order online and do it all like that, right. you know, pre-order, probably pre-order shit, you know, so right. it's less of a headache, because I've, I've done merch before, and it's like a hands-on job, you got to get this, pick this up, mail this, you know? Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And then the other thing, too, like, just in my struggles with merch, like, if you order too much, you can kind of put yourself in the hole. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what I did last time, like, I ordered, you know, I ordered, like, a box of merch and shit, but I didn't overdo it. Like, I got, you know, the multiple sizes and colors, but, I, you know, just maybe two of each. Let those go. So that way, then, you know, with that, I can ship those out accordingly, but then I don't, like, I'm not sitting on a bunch of shit because yeah. I've, I've heard so many horror stories with people with merch, they go and spend racks yeah, and racks. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's about, though, in the shipping. Yeah, yeah, you feel right me? Yeah, of course, you know. We got well, marketing it, you got to get it out there for people the normal, to see. You know, Santa Santa stuff on them, you know? Right. Uh, that's yeah, that's FG clothing. When I do, when I do shit for the city, that shit sells out quick. You right. Know? But I want to start making shit to, to appeal to everyone, you know? Right. So, like, this next shirt I'm doing is called Dead Faces. It's more colorful. It has, like, Two dead faces with a dollar sign it says "dead faces" on it. That's with hard. A dollar sign and uh, it's like purple, green, brown. You know, on a white shirt, more like uh, more modern type look. You know, right? But it's like it's like it's like fashion. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. it's stylish. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? It doesn't look stylish. like it doesn't look like no no corny yeah, shit. Yeah, none yeah, of that. Yeah, I designed that shit. I took I took a little time design. Well, I, I was a painting I did, and then I just uh, put it on my iPad and fucking digitalized it. You know, yeah, shit. it looked dope. 
Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. You gonna have like like for like for like women and and children and stuff like that too, like diversify. Uh, ev- eventually, right. eventually. But if I do that, I want to do like more. Uh, more like family oriented type deal, you know, not yeah. so like, yeah. We can always have different lines yeah, too, yeah, you know, yeah, different yeah. logos yeah. And, and art and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, real quick before we take a break, man, um, you know, coming from your city, man, do you feel, do you feel like there's more hate in your city or outside the city? How do you feel about that? I feel like I get more love in the city. That's good. Yeah, I feel like that's I get rare because a lot of people feel like they get more hate in their own city than, than anywhere I, else. I feel hate, I feel hate, hate from like certain people, but like I never, I never like hear it from them. I always hear it from other people. Oh, this person just said this. So I don't even yeah. honestly. Well, yeah, and hearsay. You can't yeah, really, you can't I, really get entertained I, I, it anyway. Nothing yeah. they can say though. And, and, and even right. the, even then, well, hey, I don't even, uh, I don't even pay attention to it. You know, because right. obviously, motherfuckers hating for a reason. You right. Know? And usually, if a motherfucker hating on you, they nah, secretly nah, love but, you, man. The homie yeah. speaking, speaking real facts. You know, right. The, the music is easy for him right now because we tapped in. I told him just speak on everything we ever did our whole life. Right. You know I mean, it makes it everything we've we been through. Yeah, we all got we all went to prison around the same time. Right. It was, it was, and then all got out around the same time. So it was like everything happens for a reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, we were just. Turn, burnt, burnt, yeah. burnt, you know. Also. I mean, you know, bro, everybody goes through their struggles and their faults in life. You can't you can't hold that over yourself and can't nobody hold that over you too. The idea is to grow, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We go through it to get to it. And yeah. once you get to it, you done already went through it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And I had to go through that shit to get my mind right, right. and fucking wake up. You yeah. Know? I feel like that shit was a wake up call too. When I fell down, man, it was the same thing for me. It's like, you know what, I'm not built for this shit. Like I got more to, I got more to life. Yeah. You know what I mean? It make- was a stepping stone for me. I, in prison that's where I learned uh how to manage. Right. I learned all this Hey, what it takes. a lot of people know this. Prison will teach you communication skills like a motherfucker. I took it, I mean, you know, oh, my uh, mama. I tattoo, you know, he ended up tattooing in there. Shout out that. To I, I learned it. I learned, you know, business. Right. Computers. Yeah. That's what it takes. But that's good. You got it. Like, my theory is this. Uh, you, we got to be walking sponges, man. We got to just soak up knowledge and, and information, bro, and just continue to grow from it, man. That's just going to catapult everything we're trying to do. And you like know what you saying? told me the other day, too, like, just connections, people, you know. And yeah. Like, Helping out each other, you know, paying it forward, you know? Right. You know, someone told me, your net worth is your net work. I believe (laughs) That's not what you know, it's who you know, you feel me? That's what it takes, you know? Facts, you know what I'm saying? You gotta know people. Yeah, you gotta know people. Well, hey, check it out, y'all, man. We in here with Tatum Up and his manager Shooter, man. We're gonna take a little break real quick. You're on the Sav Did a Podcast. We'll be right back after this. Biatch! Yo, what up, what up? We back from a little break, man. I got Tatum up, I got Shooter in here, man. We've been talking about a lot of shit, man. Music, everything in between, man. What do you guys got planned next? What we got planned next? Uh, answer that? We'll probably get a video cracking on Sunday uh, to this new track off the EP called Dead Ops with my homie uh, Baby Gutter Demon. Shout out to the homie Baby Gutter Demon. Shout him out. Yo. <clears throat> so what about... Uh, what about like any uh, other artists? You guys gonna start picking up other artists? Well, you know, you know what I'm saying. Keep pushing the label. What's yeah, the what's, what's the future for the label? The gutter babies, because he's gonna release like a little mixtape. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put all my little homies on. All my little homies been getting out the halls and shit. They got talent and shit. So uh, we're gonna start a little group for them called Gutter Babies. Okay. You know, and just uh, they gonna be on some banged out shit. You know, they all got flow. So get that shit cracking for them. Probably drop a little project for them in the next month or two. How many members? Uh, right now it's like about four of them, but two or three of them I heard their flow already. The other ones I haven't really heard, you know. But fucking, uh, we need to give them a chance and shit, see how they do. Well, Sosa, right. Sosa makes the beats. Yeah, you know, and then you got Gutter Baby. Yeah, D shout out to Baby Homie Jay. Sosa. So you guys are just like in the early in the early stages of just you know what I'm saying scouting new talent and shit like that because yeah, it just came out of nowhere you know they just yeah. got out and then all of a sudden we heard they had a flow I've seen it you know I was like hey you know, yeah, I think you need got to hear talent this and shit that's right that's right well what was like the motivation behind you know wanting to branch out into you know the the more business side of the game you know what I mean trying to find artists sign them and the whole nine trying to build a team you know right trying to build a team so pretty much it's just me right here pushing this shit you know I started off with a couple of other homies in the beginning but they weren't really like into it as much as I was so like when I meet homies that are want to rap you know I just want to try to give them an opportunity and you know push them to get to that next level and shit you know right yo so the artists you guys are working with right now they're from the same city Yo, we yeah. all from the same city. All okay, San San Diego, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, do you guys feel like you know? What I mean, you might be the like the the only face of talent coming out of the city. You know, what I'm saying it's a pretty small area. Well, we got yeah, my primo. We got my primo creep nasty too. He been doing his thing and shit. Oh yeah, shout out to creep nasty. Creep nasty that yeah. homie be getting there. Yeah, he been here. He been out there pushing, dropping videos and shit. You mm. know? Yeah, yeah, he 
he he got his own little style too, though you know. So right. he's like going on, on on his own little lane and shit. Right. Yeah. That everyday hustle. He's on that. You know, we respect that. That's the older homie right there. Yeah, most deaf, most deaf. Speaking on videos, man. Do you feel like uh, you know we were just talking like during break? You know how we live in like a real visual era now. Do you think the importance of videos is like at an all time high now? Yeah. When it comes to music, mandatory, mandatory. You get them singles that go up too. You know, but like if you ain't got. Uh, promotion behind a single, you know, it ain't gonna do, it ain't gonna really do numbers like a video would, you know. People right. people want to see shit. They want to see they want to see that cinematic cinematic video. They want to see that you know different different uh, different situations in the video and shit and ass. Everybody want to see some ass shaking. <laughs> yeah, you ain't never lied about that. Yeah, you get, <clears throat> you get some booty shaking in the video. The numbers go up. That's already a win win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think too. Just what it is on a on a on a real legitimate basis, man. Is you know, what I mean. With social media and everything, if it doesn't catch your eye, you know what I'm saying, or someone else's eye, like right in the instant, man, you already kind of lose them. You feel exactly. me? Exactly. Like you said, you know, you know, you still got some people, you know, here and there who can blow up off of a, you know, a single or just an audio version of a song. But mm-hmm. I think the visual aspect, like with TikTok and everything, is so, you know, what I mean, vital now. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So is that your approach? Like, you know, what I'm saying, like visually, like what well, what would be that, your? That's what I want to do with the slanging and banging. You know, I want to I want to uh, do a little like TikTok challenge, like a slanging and banging walk. You know, get try to get that shit go viral, like a little. Little dance, little slanging and banging, little right, 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 and banging type shit. You right, know? you be fucking with the TikTok. I barely made one like about a month ago, but shit, I fuck social media be taking so much up, so much of my time that it's like that's just another fucking social media. It's another distraction. Up. Yeah, another distraction. But I know I need to utilize it and you know get it popping eventually and get my songs on there and get little fucking challenges on there and shit. You know? No, facts. <clears throat> I'm still kind of new to TikTok, too. I think I started one a few months ago and shit. You know what I mean? I'm still learning the roads, but just like you, I'm so motherfucking busy. You feel me? It's easier for me just to get on, you know what I'm saying? Check my shit real quick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe post something here and there that counts and then get the mm-hmm. fuck off. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. But the importance of TikTok is crazy, man, because some people actually really go viral on that, get signed in the whole nine. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I think, what was that uh, What was that cat? Uh, Sada Baby. Oh, sorry. I think, yeah, that fool went like extra have viral. You ever, have you ever heard of Matt, Matt K, the baby? It sounds kind of familiar. He, he's from Dallas. He has a bunch of uh, pretty catchy, funny TikToks, and uh, I found him on TikTok, and I was like, damn, dude, that fool was hard. That nigga was hard. I mean, that, look at Jamie69. She blew up. She's from the IE, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, real shit. TikTok is like a real, real unique, um, you know, way to like get music and shit out there too. And it's crazy just how viral it is now. You know what I'm saying? And even me, I was late to the party, but it's a necessity now. You know, in the in the climate that we're in, so I think everybody got to have one. Yeah. But do you do you think it's like a um, do you think it like it, it almost what's the word for it? For lack of better words, like devalues like the music by it just becoming like you know it's like meme almost. No, not really. I, no, I wouldn't say that because like it still gets your it still gets these songs popping just off that catchy little uh, hook or that you know that that bar that everybody's feeling, you know. I I, I don't I wouldn't say it devalues de- devaluizes it. I feel like it just gives a different aspect to it, you know, a different aspect to music, a different aspect to uh, uh, the way people use music nowadays. Right, <clears throat> it's like another avenue to promote it. You feel mm-hmm. me? Exactly. So, I mean, even just from your uh, your perspective, what's like the key, like you know, what I'm saying tools you use for like promotion. Like, do you do like you know, what I mean, marketing? Do you hire you know agencies? What's your what's your uh, take on that? That's exactly where we're going with it. You know, right now, like making the calls, seeing what it takes. Obviously, it just takes the money. You know, to get in certain situations, you get the slots. You got to meet these promoters to get the headliners, and then you know you got to have Plan Bs because we set this shit all up, and then you know fools get locked up. Things mm-hmm. change. Like, you know, we were supposed to uh, be on a headliner with Little Weirdo in a couple of different spots, too. Mm-hmm. And then he gets locked up, you know. And uh, so that changes everything <clears throat> of all the moves that we got to make. So it's always plan B's, pushing it, trying to get him his shows, trying to get him his money, trying to grind it. Yeah, no, definitely. You got to be you gotta be prepared for the worst at the end of the day, yeah. man. My theory is, you know what I'm saying, have plan B, C, yeah. D, E, and F for fucking. You feel me? Have you heard of that full promo guy? That actually kind of rings a bell. He from out the uh, the IE? No, nah, I don't know where he's from, but I follow. How does him on that sound Instagram, familiar? But that will be he be dropping a lot of knowledge on promoting and all that. He has a website to to promote and all that. I was probably gonna fuck with him pretty soon because uh, he be getting your songs on Spotify playlists and all that. You right. Know? So I think that's what I was gonna do next because I've been going through the, like different promos like Lion B's neighborhood music, you know, and all that. But um, now I'm not, I'm not trying to knock him or nothing, but I just feel like. Uh, I, I, my shit don't get promoted the way I want it to for paying as much as I pay, you know? No, real shit. I'm paying, I'm paying top dollar for the best shit, you know, and my 
song staying in the bio for a day and then coming off like type shit. Right, you're like, not really seeing the results not, like yeah, for yeah, your money's like worth type I, shit. Yeah, that I want to see. Right, when yeah. I think too, you know what I'm saying, like marketing is so, you know, essential, like it's always going to be a, you know what I'm saying, the top dollar expense because it's the it's the main, you know what I'm saying, ingredient that you need to get your shit out there, you feel me? Mm -hmm. What I've noticed it does work, the Spotify playlist and shit is crazy. Mm -hmm. If you can get on like the right, you know what I'm saying, Spotify playlist and shit, like the permanent playlist, that shit will boost your numbers up on that aspect. I know the social media ones, you know, those ones can go pretty far depending on what your bag is, you feel me? Mm. But I think at the end of the day, too, it's just, you know what I'm saying, the consistency. What do you think the most you paid on a, on a promo type deal like that? Probably around two Gs. Oh, two Gs? So, yeah. So you, what would you recommend, like, paying out a good amount to get... Oh, yeah, because, I mean, you're not going to see, you know what I'm saying, no substantial results off of no chump change, you yeah, feel me? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Big bang take little bank, especially when it comes to marketing, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Now, if your bag is really right, you hire, you know what I'm saying, a real good PR team, you know, that whole nine to get your shit out there, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, I think it, at the end of the day, it just boils down to marketing, man. Like I tell a lot of people, you know, the real work starts when you get outside the outside the studio. You feel me? Yeah. That's when the expenses start, the videos, the marketing, and all that. What uh, what kind of advice would you give to you know what I'm saying any other artists coming up, just from your experiences? Uh, fuck, just stay dropping, just stay dropping. You know, you might not sound the way you want to sound now, but if you're passionate about your music, just just keep putting it out there, keep keep evolving, keep fucking learning. You know, keep picking up game. And uh, you'll make it. I feel like anybody can make it. It's, you know, one person might not like your shit, but there be 10 other people that do fuck with your shit, and they're going to tell their friends and tell their friends, mm -hmm. you know? No, that's real shit. And even the people who don't like your shit are going to tell somebody they don't like your shit, well, and that could be, you know what I'm saying? Well, a new and also, you know, not being afraid.